Hey, welcome to another tutorial from PhotoshopIsFun.com. Now today I'm really excited to share with you a technique that I've been developing within the Camera Raw tool. And it's a technique that specifically addresses the problem of uneven skin tones. And it's a really simple way to deal with uneven skin tones for your portrait work. So with that said, let's just jump straight into it. I want to show you how this works and, um, and then hopefully hear back from you folks on how well it's working for you and your photos. Okay, so most professional retouchers, including myself, would generally solve the problem of uneven skin tones by using some type of gradient map technique. Um, and there's some really good ones out there. I should probably do a post on mine as well. But I'm finding that this particular technique, this new technique, to be not only easier to apply, but also just as powerful as those other techniques. So let me show you a before and after on how this looks, and then I will show you or at least walk you through the steps on how I got here. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the results of this technique. So here you see the technique having been applied to a photo. Now the model's um, skin tonality from her forehead to her chin all the way down to her neckline is really smooth and it has a lot of continuity. It's nice. Um, if you were to look at the before picture, which is here, you'll see that the skin has a lot of unevenness in terms of its um, tones and uh, it's just not as you know, it's not as nice nor as soft as after applying the technique. Now, it's true that I did add some vignetting and some contrast to her eyes as well. But if you just stay focused in on the skin, when I turn it back on, you'll see that the skin's um, um, tones, again, from that, you know, under her eyes to around her mouth especially, um, you know, they really smoothed out nicely. So let's go ahead and go through how to do the technique. So I'm going to get rid of this stuff, and then we're just going to basically start from scratch, and we're going to um, go through all of the steps to get us there. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is get our photo into the camera raw tool. Now, if you shoot in a raw file format, that's no problem. As soon as you drop it into Photoshop, it'll automatically open it up into the camera raw tool. However, if you're like most people and you shoot in a JPEG file format, then it really depends upon which version of Photoshop you're using for how we'll go ahead and start this technique. So, for example, if you have a standalone version of Photoshop like CS6 or CS5, then you're going to have to set up the camera raw preferences so that they recognize when you drop in a um, JPEG that uh, it needs to bring up the Camera Raw tool so that you can work with that image within Camera Raw before bringing it over to Photoshop. Now if you're not familiar with how to do that, go ahead and click on the button here to watch that tutorial. It's really short and then you can come on back and we can kind of continue with this lesson. Now, if you shoot in a Creative Cloud uh, version of Photoshop, then you're going to go about this very differently. Um, it's a lot easier, actually. But I'm going to go ahead and start with and assume that um, a lot of you folks are using a standalone version, such as CS6 or CS5. And so I'm going to go ahead and start this technique there. And then I'll go ahead and show you, if you were using the Creative Cloud version, how you would go about doing this and bypassing some of these earlier steps. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is close this, and that way we are truly starting from scratch, and your experiences should mirror mine pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to say no one saving it. And I'm going to go back to the folder, find the image, drag it back into Photoshop, and now it'll open up into Camera Raw. Now, and before I hit Open Image, what I want to do is hold down the Shift key, and you'll see the text changes when I do that. You can see now it says Open Object, and what that means is it's going to open up the image as a smart object in Photoshop, um, and that way I can come back into Camera Raw and make further adjustments if I need to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and click Open Object, and then what I'm going to do is I am going to duplicate this layer. And um, once I've duplicated it, I'm going to double click on the name so that I can edit the name. And I'm going to call this Skin Tone. And um, I like to do that so that I know what I did on that particular layer. But you can do whatever you want. Maybe you don't need to name yours. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the bottom layer, the original, and I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to say Rasterize Layer. And what that does is it turns off the Smart Object Properties. And that way, if I edit the Skin Tone um, layer in uh, Camera Raw, it won't impact this original um, lower layer. And now that's exactly what I want to do is I want to go back into Camera Raw with this particular layer. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the Smart Object icon, which is right here. And that'll bring me back into Camera Raw. So over here on the right hand side is where all of the magic happens for this technique and specifically it's in the clarity slider. Now if you're not familiar with clarity what it does is it enhances what's called um, large scale contrast as opposed to like small scale 
contrast. And when you boost large scale contrast, that works great for like um, landscapes. It kind of gives them this HDR, this detailed HDR um, look, even though it's not true HDR. It's a really nice effect to do. However, with skin, it generally looks like this, which is not very attractive, especially on female skin. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this back to zero by double clicking on the um, little slider here. And instead of boosting um, clarity, what we're going to do is we're going to mute these large scale contrasts by going the other direction. So we're going to move left into the negatives. And um, what I found in both my personal and professional applications is the um, generally speaking, the negative 60 range works really well. Um, for um, getting the effect that I'm looking for for smoothing out skin tonality. Now you can see right here that um, it's that range that looks really good for this photo. Now play around with it for yours. It might be a little bit different. Maybe it's negative 50 or negative 70 for yours. I don't know. Play around with it. And then go ahead and click OK. And now I have that particular layer um, added to my Photoshop file. And if I unclick it, I'll see the original and you can see the difference. But what I don't want to do is have that applied everywhere. So I want to go ahead and mask out everything else. I just want the skin to be um, this uh, nice kind of even tones and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down the Alt key when I click on the layer mask for that layer. And that will allow me to go ahead and paint back in the skin. So to do that, I need to select a brush tool. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my brush tool. And then I'm going to go up and make sure that the hardness is set to zero so that it's a really soft brush. And what that means is that the edges of the brush will be feathered and it won't have such a harsh edge on the end. Um, and then next, I want to make sure that my foreground color is set to white. And um, I also want to zoom in on the model's face. So I'm going to hold down Command um, or Control on the P PC and then um, click the uh, plus sign. And finally, I want to go ahead and just get her kind of lined up so that I can work with this easier. And now I'm pretty much ready to brush. But actually, before I start, I'm going to go ahead and do a um, the red overlay or quick mask um, over this so that I can see exactly where I'm brushing. And so to invoke that, what you do is click on the backslash uh, key, which should be right above Enter. And that puts the red overlay. And that will show me exactly where I'm um, masking. So I'm going to go ahead and start and I'm just going to go over all of the skin areas that I want to even out. Now what I want to caution you about is do not go over um, you know, edges that have a high contrast and basically shape the face. So for example, around the nose, um, those edges here, I'm going to go ahead and make a smaller brush so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So right in this area, the the, the contrasting edges that define features on the face, you don't want to um, apply this technique to because you want those to stand out as they are. Um, otherwise, if you do go over those, you're more likely to um, tell the viewer that something's happened to this picture, and that's obviously what we don't want to do. So you go over all the areas that um, are more neutral in terms of contrast, and uh, you just quickly go over those. You should paint them all white. Don't worry about the white color right now. That's going to go away as soon as we get rid of that red overlay. And you'll see exactly what um, the final effect is. So I'm going to use a little bit larger brush, again, by hitting my bracket keys um, to go up and down on my brush size. And this doesn't have to be perfect since I'm just doing a tutorial here to show you the impact um, of this effect. So again, getting over the nose, up in this area. And um, I'm not going to go over her chin line because, again, that's um, one of the sharp contrasting edges that I don't want to touch. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that intact. I'm going to do a little bit larger brush here so I can get more surface area. And I will just finish out like that. And next, what I want to do is basically turn off this red overlay like so. And then I'm going to back out by doing um, control or command zero. And um, now you can see that it's been applied. So if I show you a before, you can see that skin tone isn't nearly as um, consistent, doesn't have the continuity that it does when we showed the applied version. So there you go. So grab some of your photos, apply this technique, see how it works for you. And until the next tutorial, happy photoshopping. Oh snap, so I didn't show uh, my fellow Creative Cloud Photoshop users how to set this up. So let me go ahead and get rid of this um, layer that we just did. 
And basically what will happen is you'll bring in your image into Photoshop. It'll look just like this. And you'll um, go ahead and duplicate that base layer so that you have a top one. Make sure the top one is selected. And then go up to Filter and then down to Camera Raw Filter. And then from there, everything should be about the same. You'll go ahead and take your clarity slider, get down to that negative 60 area, click OK. And then you'll mask this off and go through those same steps. So now officially I can get out of here um, for until the next time. <laughs> Happy photoshopping.